Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up emulation station desktop edition. What we're going to do is go ahead and download this for windows and we're going to get the portable edition. You can use the installer. I choose to have it portable because I want to have it on a separate hard drive. This way it won't affect my main install. If I decide to upgrade to windows 11 again, now we're going to need another application to run with emulation station as emulation station is just a front end. RetroArch is what we're going to use so that we can play our games through it. We'll head over to the download section and once again i click on the download which will give us a portable application now that we have both applications downloaded let's go ahead and extract them just use seven zip and extract here once those are done we'll do a little cleanup and get rid of those zip files let's go ahead and open emulation station desktop and under emulators go ahead and drag in our retroarch before we launch Emulation Station, I want to go ahead and launch RetroArch and set that up first. We'll just quickly go over a few things here. In the System folder, this is where you're going to need to add your BIOS files if you're going to run anything like Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and any other console that requires a BIOS file. They will go in here. Just one note, if you're doing it for Dreamcast, you need a subfolder called DC, which I'll show you right now. This is where your Dreamcast BIOS and files will go. Go ahead and launch RetroArch. And I like to go straight to the online updater. And I like to update everything first. So let me go ahead and do that. So once we're done updating, next thing we're going to do is get some cores. On my desktop, I have a folder called ROMs. Unfortunately, because of YouTube's rules, we cannot share where to get these ROMs. But a quick Google search will help you find what you need. Now, before we set up our ROMs, I want to go ahead and open up Emulation Station. This is why we're opening it up. It's letting us know no game files were found. We're going to have to create the directories for this, and it's going to create it right in our Emulation Station folder. We'll create directories, proceed, and they were created successfully. Now we'll quit, and if we enter ROMs, we have a folder for each game system here. Now, if you're confused about the abbreviations, they have a system.txt down here. And if you open that, you can search for with control F, the console of your choice. So let's say I wanted to look up PlayStation. We have PlayStation 2 as PS2, PlayStation 3 as PS3, and so on. The one important one that many people might not know is the PSX is PlayStation, the original. So we'll close this. And we have some ROMs here. I'll go ahead and find a corresponding folder to put the games in. So we have a main folder. I have a main game here. And there's a text document in here as well that you want to take a look at. You open it and lets you know which emulator is going to run by default. Now, if you have a ROM that runs on a different emulator, you have alternative launchers here as well. The one thing I would do is Pretty much just cut this, move it down here, and then copy the one that you want and paste it up here. As simple as that. We're gonna have to make sure we download this particular core through so RetroArch. So for instance here, MAME is gonna require MAME Lib Retro. We'll go to Online Updater, Core Downloader, and MAME Lib Retro will be this one. We'll close this, we'll back up. I'm going to add a turbo graphics game. So this will be a PC engine. We find PC engine. Copy this game over. Let's take a look at the system info. Midnaffin PCE. And you have your other choices here as well. Whichever you choose to use is up to you. But I'm going to go ahead and use the defaults here. So Midnaffin, the alternate name would be Beetle. So anytime you see Midnaffin, just understand that it's Beetle. And we're using the Beetle PCE core here. Go ahead and do this for the rest of your games. Now for NES and the system info, it's asking us to use Messin. I personally like to use Nestopia. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do this. We'll go ahead and cut it. I'll hit enter and paste it here. And then I'll just cut this and paste it in the launch command. Keep it clean and then save. We'll close that and when we launch it, it's going to need Nestopia. Here we have Nestopia. Now 
now that we have our ROMs in place, I'm going to change a few things for functionality here on RetroArch. We'll go back to the main menu. I'm going to go into settings. Under the video tab, I like to change the output. Instead of DirectX 11, I like to use Vulkan. I find that AMD GPUs and Vulkans are a really good fit together. Another thing I'd like to do at the main menu is go to the input section. Under hotkeys, I like to change the menu toggle for the controller. I like to make it L3 and R3. This way, when I hit L3 and R3, I can access the RetroArch in-game menu or the core menu and change some settings from there. One more thing, we'll go to full screen mode and we'll start in full screen mode. This way, when you launch your games, though I, I believe it's in the command, we want to guarantee that it starts up in full screen. And from here, we could go ahead and quit. Let's go ahead and launch Emulation Station. All right, so let me just give you a quick tour. What we can do here is go left and right, and we could select our consoles from here. And it's really cool because it shows you the controllers of each console. It kind of gives you a trip down memory lane here. If we hit enter or you press A, it'll take us inside the category. And with left and right, you could also switch consoles here. Up and down, we'll select through different games. But I chose to go with one game just for simplicity here. Another cool thing we can do is if we hit the menu button, we can find a bunch of settings here that we could change. So the first setting here is a scraper. And what this can do is gonna get us cover art information for the games and really turn up the presentation here. So you have an option from getting from screen scraper or the games database. But in my opinion, I find screen scraper is a lot more accurate. And you can let it know to scrape all the games or folders. So you can be very selective here. And you can go ahead and select which systems you want it to scrape for specifically. You don't want to scrape for everything. Another option here is the content setting. If you're running low on space, you may want to omit videos because this does download video files as well as a quick demonstration of the game that's highlighted. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that for this example here. And then once you're ready, you could just go ahead and hit start. And once it's done, you'll see a whole different presentation. One thing I must mention is that Screen Scraper works a little slower while the game's database works a little faster. You trade speed for accuracy. Now the games are done scraping. We'll hit OK. And we'll back out of this menu. And as you can see, now we have a cover art and a screenshot of the game. Along with a nice descriptor here. Now, if we go back to that menu, we have more options that we can explore here, particularly UI settings here. We can change our theme and we have a few built in themes already, so we could go with the modern theme. Now, this gives us a Nintendo Switch like user interface. The slate theme, I believe this is uh, one of their classic original emulation station themes. And while those are there, we can also explore some other themes. But we'll go ahead and go to theme downloader. And you can just go ahead and explore the variety of themes that they have available. I'm going to get a few here. I like art book next. This one's a really cool looking one. And one of my favorites is the Epic Noir next. Now, once you're done selecting the themes you've downloaded, you can come back down to the theme list and select them from here. So I'm going to go with that art book next. We'll hit back. And if these look familiar, it's because a lot of these are used for these retro handheld consoles. And that's emulation station on there as well. This is the coin ops. Looks pretty cool. The cool thing about this layout is that if you had the video playing, it would play inside that Tron you see there on the screen.
And as you can see with this theme, this one fits really perfect for the video playback. You switch consoles, you can see that the video is perfectly nestled inside the overlay. So it gives you a really good perspective of what game you're going to be playing. And the next step from here is just select the game you want to play and have fun. Once you have the game selected, you can use the controller toggle, like I mentioned earlier, and go inside RetroArch's menu. You wanted to select a CRT shader for a more authentic experience. You can do that from here, turning on the shaders and loading your preset. You go to shaders slang, go to CRT and pick from here. I'll go ahead and pick one that I know works on even low end systems as well. And that's the ZFast CRT HD mask. This is one of my favorite ones to use. Let's say you wanted to add another emulator and you didn't like the emulators that were in RetroArch. Let's say for PlayStation, you wanted to use DuckStation. Inside the folder that you have Emulation Station, we're all the way down to a readme file. In this file, it lets you know how to upgrade to the next version. But another thing that it does, it shows you pre-configured emulator locations. So if you want to bring in your own emulator, this is how the folder should be structured. And I'll give you an example of that now. We head to emulators. We have emulator RetroArch 164, and it's gonna find this RetroArch EXE. I'm gonna go ahead and download DuckStation. So we'll go to DuckStation's GitHub. Save it directly to the emulation folder. Here we have DuckStation that we just freshly downloaded. I'm going to right click and extract it to its own folder. Let's clean up and delete the zip. And now for DuckStation, as you can see, it's going to look for these two files in this format. So we need to rename the main folder as DuckStation so that it can find DuckStation QT. So from here, let's just delete this back part. Now we have DuckStation. This is the file that it's going to look for. If we head back into our ROMs folder, all the way down to PSX, and into our system info, we can see that DuckStation can be launched from here as well. But I'll take this launch command off, and we'll add DuckStation here. But now the launch command will use the emulator DuckStation to launch the ROM. Let's go ahead and save this. Now before we run DuckStation, we should configure it. We go ahead and launch DuckStation and set it up as we would normally. Now I have videos in this channel that I'm going to link for setting up DuckStation. So I'm just gonna do a quick and dirty install here. And now with the setup complete, we'll go into our settings, into our interface. And I want the game to start in full screen. So we're gonna go ahead and tick this here under interface. And then from here, you can make any other changes that you would possibly like. I'll put the Vulcan renderer with my card. And you can enable post-processing here to add a CRT shader if you like. And with that set up, we'll go back into Emulation Station. All right, once we head back into Emulation Station, we'll hit Start. Then we'll go into Other Settings. We'll go into Alternative Emulators, or PSX. We'll change this to DuckStation Standalone. From here, we'll back up. Back up. Go to the PlayStation emulator. Go to your PlayStation game list.
Here we have the game launching. Little duck station instead of retro arch. You could do this for all of your other favorite emulators and run it through emulation station like this as well. This is one of many desktop front ends I'm going to explore this year and show you how to set up in this channel. If you find this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing and checking out my membership and or donation links in the description below. I want to thank everyone for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.